Okay, for this uh, third segment of our uh, chapter four, where the first problem here in our practice looks at very similar to what we had in our notes from uh, segment one, where we're trying to figure out <clears throat> based on what they give us, either we're gonna figure out our sales, we're gonna figure out the cost of goods sold based on the amount of inventory we have purchased and what we have left, or we're going to figure out our expenses or net income. So we're going to let's we're going to do a few of these. We're not going to do them all. They all will work the same. So what this is, in a way, is kind of a elongated income statement with our sales minus cost of goods sold equals gross profit minus our expenses and our net income. So if you remember that from this is our new this isn't exactly the final income statement, what it looks like, but this is more exact, more of what we're looking at. Uh, they don't put in the sales return and discounts on this one. So they basically start us out with net sales and then we're gonna figure up our cost of goods sold based on the inventory. And we're using gross prop, then we're gonna get gross profit minus our expenses to get our income. Okay, so let's go back up here. Remember we take our beginning the main thing we're going to be figuring out for a lot of these is somewhere in this category here with figuring out the cost of goods sold. So here they give us the uh, sales and then they they tell us what the cost of goods sold is, but they want us to be able to determine what would have been our ending inventory if this would have all been the case. And notice here it tells us if any amounts should be subtracted, they want, they want us to put it in, in the negative like they do for all these other uh, ending inventory and so our answer here will be a reduction because if you come up here and you look at our our uh, formula <clears throat> to get cost of goods sold we have to take our beginning inventory plus purchases they don't have anything about um, returning anything so they're just giving us this plus this and then they're not even figuring up the equal sign that's fine you don't have to but this plus this minus the ending inventory, that's what we're trying to find here, will give us our cost of goods sold. So all we wanna do is just reverse and work this problem just a little bit backwards. So the total goods that we have available for sale are the 8,000 plus the 38,000. So we've got 46,000 ready for, to be sold. And if I end the day, out of the 46, if I end selling 34,000 of those, how much do I have left? And the answer would be, I have 11,000, I'm gonna put that in as a negative because we're subtracting 11,950. And that gets us to our cost of goods sold. And then this one, getting the gross profit is very simple. Just take our sales, minus our cost of goods sold, which they just give us to us in the problem. Sales minus $34,050 gives us a gross profit of $27,950. And then when you subtract out your expenses, you can just do this one in your head, minus $10,017,950. That's all there really, that's all there is to that one. <clears throat> Let's do uh, maybe two more. We'll do B and then we'll come over here and maybe do one without sales and see how we work that one backwards. All right, so with B, we are trying to figure up how much purchases did we have through the year. If I started with this and then I ended the year with this much and I sold 16,000, let's work the equation. Um, let's just go backwards. So we had 17,000. 050 <clears throat> and then I added in something I don't know what um, I subtract out 3,000 and then I ended with 16,000 so the best way I would think to do this one is let's just let's put it into a little formula with just uh, just to be like X I think that, I don't know if that, that will help you visualize it better, but so I'm going to pull up a separate thing here. Let's put in, we got 17,000 of our beginning plus something. We don't know what that is. 
minus our ending inventory, 3,000, equals 16,000 cost of goods sold. And that's, that's all that this equation is showing, beginning inventory, plus my purchases, I don't know what that is, subtract out my ending inventory, and that equals my cost of goods sold, and they tell us that. So now I just got to solve for x. So x, um, let's let's com let's just combine these first two. So x, because we have a positive x here, so we can keep that positive x, and then plus the seventeen thousand minus three thousand. That's fourteen oh five oh. Well, sixteen thousand, and then all we've got to do is uh, now we just got to solve for x. So subtract 14,000 from both sides. We didn't make very much purchases on this one. x equals uh, 2,000. No, let's just, it's, it's a 1950, but we'll do it on the calculator here. 16,000. Minus 14050, 1950. And very little purchases. So now if we would just we could we could check to see if we're right. See if everything works out. We had such a large amount of opening inventory, 17,050. We only needed to purchase very little, 1950. We ended with uh, still 3,000 left, but that's not very much, 3,000 compared to the 17 that we started with. And when you combine everything, yep, you get 16 grand. So we purchased very, very little that time. Now our gross profit, simply take the 43.5 minus uh, 16,000. We get 27.5. 27.5, we can see if we're right by checking if we subtract out the expenses. 1050, that better be our ending net income, and it is. All right, let's look at D. With D, we can, um, let's see how we want to do this. Okay, we can get our cost of goods sold. Cost of goods sold is simply just taking these items and adding or subtracting them. So we take the 8,000 that we had, plus we added in a new 32,000, subtract out what we still have left, tells me my cost of goods sold was 33,400. Then the only thing left we have to get is our sales. And we can do that by just looking at what is our gross profit? What is our cost of goods sold? And then figuring up what sales has to be based on that. Because remember, sales minus cost of goods sold is gross profit. So just turn the equation around. If we take the 45.6, add in the 33.4, we get that sales has to be 79,000. Now I'll go ahead and check the work on the ones that we did on A, B, and D and everything looks good. All right, let's go into more of the journal entry type questions. This one, this one's simply just putting them in, in order what's going to happen. We don't need to go through this one. Okay. Let's look at number three. Uh, let's see if this is, yeah, I think this one will be, will be fine. What I think is gonna help is I'm gonna pull up a, a T account sheet, and you may wanna do this just on a side scrap piece of paper or pulling up a T account sheet may help as well, but I think it'll help you for visualization purposes to know. Now, the ones we did in our um, part two, segment two, were actually a little bit harder than what these are gonna be. So that will help you out. Okay, let's this moved and let's start in here with uh, <clears throat> on uh, April 2nd 
purchased forty six hundred dollars of inventory or merchandise, same thing from the Lion Company with credit terms. So that means that we bought it on account. They're not going to give us credit terms if we paid cash. They're just going to go ahead and give us the discount if if one would apply. If we pay with uh, within fifteen days, we get two percent discount. Otherwise, we pay everything. Everything's due in sixty days. And it says it's FOB shipping point. Now they don't tell us the amount of shipping. That's gonna come down here on number three. That's one of these where it's a little bit easier on this problem. They separate it out, whereas I put it all together in an, an example. So let's do the first one here. The first one's um, really pretty easy. We can do this one like we did where you find, where you find the uh, amount of a discount, but we'll hold off on that until it's actually time. This one, all we wanna do is just debit our merchandise inventory. They call it merchandise inventory. In my example, I just call it inventory, same thing. $4,600 is what they bought. Right now, we don't know if they're gonna pay it or not. So we're gonna just credit our accounts payable to the Lion Company, 4,600, simple as that. that. This one's pretty simple so far. So I come over here and my merchandise inventory for uh, April the second was uh, in the bargain forty six hundred. And we had an account payable to the Lion Company. Forty six hundred. Okay, we paid $300 cash for the shipping charges. Remember that comes back to our notes. Our notes say anything that gets the item ready to use or sell goes into the cost of the, into the merchandise. And one of those is the FOB shipping point, shipping coming in. So we're, we're not gonna debit shipping expense. We're not gonna debit anything like that. We're gonna just gonna simply debit merchandise inventory for 300. And credit, it says we paid cash to, we directly paid for the shipping company. That's not generally how it works in, in real life. Usually the buyer isn't paying the shipping company. It's usually the seller. So that's why I do it differently in my examples. I try to make a little bit more real life. But if this was the case, this is how it would have worked out. We still debit, it's still gonna end up similar to how, we, how I did it in my examples with uh, the inventory is going up. That's the ultimate thing that's happening here. Inventory is going up by $300. It's just that in this case, we're paying the shipping company instead of us paying the seller because the seller's paying the shipping company and that's how it really works. Okay, so we got that one done. Now it says we returned some bad merchandise for $600. Well, that all goes back again to any cost that gets the item ready to use or sell and one of those is a return so if we're going to return something we're simply going to undo part of the original entry we originally bought 4600 but we didn't buy that much now we bought 600 less so on uh, let's say it's the next day i don't know if it is we're going to return uh six hundred dollars and then simply they're gonna, instead of giving us the money back, they're not gonna give us our money back because we haven't paid yet. So they're gonna take 600 bucks off of our bill. So we're gonna come here and do an account payable. It's a line for 600. And then credit our merchandise inventory for $600 and report the entry. Now, it all comes down to our final payment here on the, four, on the April 17th. It says we sent a check to the Lion Company and net of the discount and the return merchandise. Okay, so that's telling us that we probably got the discount. It's giving us a little hint. So let's go back and check to make sure. It says as long as we paid within 15 days, we get 2% discount. They haven't talked anything about sales tax like I do in my problem, so we don't have to worry about taking that out. Okay, 2% within 15 days. So as long as we pay by the 17th, and it says here it is the 17th, so we just made it. We get a 2% discount based on what we still owe. So 
So remember, right now we have a balance. If we were gonna balance this out at the moment, put our lines in, we have a $4,000 balance. <clears throat> when it's all said and done, I want that to be zero. So to make that go away, my first order of business is to show that I have an account payable debit to Lion Company of 4,000. But my credit to cash isn't going to be $4,000 because they're giving me a discount of 2% based on this number, my net, what I actually purchased. Because I didn't really purchase the 600. So if we get out the calculator and take 2% of $4,000, bucks I get to take off of my bill and that's what I'm going to pay when I pay cash I'm not going to pay four thousand I'm going to pay 80 less than that so that comes out to be 3920 right now my journal entry doesn't equal and one thing I do not want to do is I do not want to come up here and put 3920 because if I put 3920 that shows I still have a balance so if I come down here and put a balance in I would still owe 80 bucks but I don't I owe nothing they gave me a discount. So I need to show that. I need to put this at the full 4,000. What really happened is I paid only 39.20 for the inventory, not including the shipping. So that's what really the inventory cost me was 39.20 without the shipping. So I'm taking away 80 bucks of the inventory cost on 417. And that is my final credit. For the merchandise and import. Okay, now pretty much the very similar. We're just going to do uh, the next one here. It's the only difference is it's, it's FOB destination. So therefore, there is no shipping costs that we have to worry about because remember what the FOB I told us. I told us what it really stood for, free on board. But really, what it what we want to think of it as is uh, free to the buyer. So it's free to the buyer, the shipping, all the way till it gets to our house. So that's good. We don't have to pay any shipping. So even if they told us a shipping, we would leave it out because it's not part of our bill. We purchased $8,500 of merchandise, so that's easy enough, $8,500 uh, with credit terms. So that means I bought it on account. And it says I bought it from First Corporation. So we're going to do accounts payable first. Easy enough. Now, the, this one I may, I'm just going to remember here that it was 110. So as long as I pay by the 28th, I get a 1% discount on my net purchases. Now, it's telling us here that we received an allowance. Basically, what that's meaning is some of the inventory was probably damaged. But instead of giving it all back and then giving us a full credit, they're just saying, keep the inventory. We're just going to reduce the cost of it a little bit. We're going to take a little bit off of your bill. Okay, great. So my inventory actually went down by the amount. So it was it was really genuinely eighty five hundred dollars, but now it's really only worth eight thousand because they're taking a little bit of money off of my bill, five hundred bucks. So therefore, I take a little bit off my inventory costs, five hundred bucks. So my inventory only cost eight thousand net. Now on the 28th, so remember that was a date that we had to remember. We're going to go ahead and get the full discount. So we get a 1% discount of the 8,000, not the 8,500, because that's that's not really what the full price was. The full price was 8,000. I get a 1% discount. That's again $80 if you do the math. So if we're going to take um, first off, we're going to reduce our accounts payable by the full 8,000 because I don't owe them anything anymore once I make the payment. I'm going to pay cash of the $79.20 and credit my merchandise inventory by that $80 discount that I received. Record the entry and then if we check the work, make sure we've got everything good. And it looks like we do. Okay, let's go on to the next one. Um, this one is very similar to the one we just did. And we could do it. Uh, let's see what some of the others are. Okay, yeah, this one may be good. Because this, the first one, we're doing it from Macy's 
um, point of view and from one of the from one of them we're doing it from Macy's and one from what the other one we're doing it from Allied the uh, who is the seller so let's let's this is very similar to what we did in my um, segment number two where we had the auto world we had us the auto world and then whoever the other guy was either the buyer or the seller same thing's going to be happening here same we're going to look at the same transactions it's just we're going to be putting them in in two different two different uh, times two different ways so the first one we are going to be doing it from allied's perspective allied well, it just will depend. Macy is the major customer. So Allied is the seller we're selling right now. So let's, let's get into it and see how this would work. So right now we're doing everything from Allied's perspective. All right, let's view the transaction. <clears throat> Number one. Allied made its first and only purchase of inventory for the period on May 3rd. Okay, so we're the seller, so we have to have something to sell. We're buying inventory, so merchandise inventory. And it's it's telling us, it's, we don't even have to do the any calculation. We bought 2,000 items for 10 bucks each, paid cash. So total, it tells us there, you just do the math, 20 grand. How did I get it? I paid cash for 20 grand. Ally, that's us. We sold fifteen hundred dollars of the units. So, uh, what I like to do, I don't like to be just out, uh, kind of out in the dark and let them tell me everything. I like to have it figured out myself because I know at some point I'm probably going to have to do it. So, we, when we go back to one, I'm just going to make a little note here that I have two thousand units, and they cost me ten bucks each. So, just a little note off to the side. That'll help me to remember to when I start selling them, they're going to give me the number, but later on they may not. And I want to be able to know that I can figure it up myself. All right. So it told us before that we bought 2000 items. So now we're selling most of them. We're selling 1500 and we're selling them for a little bit of a profit because I bought them for 10. I'm selling them for 14. Okay. So let's go ahead and do uh, part one. We only do, when you're doing it in these uh, connect exercises, you usually do one, one piece at a time. So here we're just doing the sale piece. Uh, it says we sold it under credit terms. So what I, and you could have a separate T account sheet. Um, let's, I'm just, I think, yeah, I think I'll go ahead and pull a separate one up. And let's pull up another inventory. This will this will help me. You could just do it off to the side and, and make a few little notes instead of using an, an entire T account sheet. You don't really need to because we're only dealing with a couple accounts. But we've got it here. All right. So our first entry was we had twenty thousand to inventory and twenty thousand that we owed to the some company the manufacturer all right now we're coming here we're selling fifteen hundred dollar or fifteen hundred units at fourteen bucks a piece so fifteen hundred times fourteen i'm selling uh twenty one thousand and they went ahead and just told us that made it real easy on us twenty one thousand and we're on may 5th May 5th, 21,000. You don't have to do the T account sheet. I just, I like to, it helps me to visualize it better. And the terms, I'm gonna put this out to the side just so I can remember. The terms are 210, net 60. Now the net 60, I can kind of, uh, I can leave that alone for now. I'm just, let's, um, two and then let's so he doesn't put it into a different thing put it like that those were my terms 210 so if i as long as i pay by may 15th i'm good so we've got the accounts receivable for 21,000 and then 
under sales revenue or just sales, 21,000. Now it's gonna have us do part two because we did the sales. Now we're ready for the cost of goods sold. Now on this little write-up, they don't give it to us. I don't know why, because up here further, if we actually look at the entire, we actually look at the entire uh, list of the full instructions, it does tell us the amount. We could have figured it up as well, but I wanted to show you that it is here. <clears throat> so when we look at this one, it says we sold 1,500 units. Uh huh. The cost, the goods cost allied 15,000. We could have done that too, based on our side sheet. When it, uh, when we had at 10 bucks a piece, and we're selling 1,500 of them, 10 times 1,500 is 15,000. They told us that here, but they just don't tell us that here for whatever reason. So we've got our cost of goods sold needs to be 15,000. We're getting rid of our merchandise for 15,000. So we got rid of quite a bit of our inventory. We only got 5,000 left. That would have been my cost of goods sold for the 15 grand. Okay, so now uh, Macy, that's our customer, returns 125 units. And remember the price was 14 bucks each. So if we take 14 times 125, that's where they get the 1750. So she returns it. Remember, it's just the opposite as if, as if we had a sale. So instead of crediting sales revenue, we're going to debit sales returns for 1750. And then we're going to put that seventeen fifty back on her account, onto her earnings receivable, take it right off. So come down here, we have a sales return of seventeen fifty, and take off seventeen fifty from her account, and then that's going to affect part of her two percent. Now, when she returns something, she also then is, we also have to put those inventory back on our books at 10 bucks a piece. So we're putting back um, 125 units at 10 bucks a piece. So we're gonna be debiting our inventory and crediting the, those cost of goods sold. Now, again, when we go down to here, oh, it actually told us that this, this time to go off 50. I remember last time they didn't tell us the cost of goods sold. So we're going to show that we're getting that merchandise back at 10 bucks a piece. 125 items at 10 bucks a piece, so that's where they get the 1250. We're going to credit the cost of goods sold because we didn't really sell those items because they were returned. One more thing happened before a payment was made. Macy discovers that 200 units are scuffed but they're still okay. Maybe she'll sell them for a discount. Therefore, we're gonna give her a reduction on her bill. So instead of us getting the items back and giving her full credit, we're gonna give her a partial credit. Because remember, she paid 14 bucks per item. And if there's 200 items that are not very good, if, I, if she would just return all of them, I would have been giving her back $2,800. And good thing that's not happening. I'm only giving her back 300. Granted, I'm not getting back any of the inventory. I'm just giving her a $300 discount. So again, we call that a sales return, or in this case, an allowance for 300. And we take that off of her bill, off of her accounts receivable, 300. So we come over here, take off another 300, and put another 300 into our sales return. All right, we're ready now to, uh, we received payment from Macy from her May 5th. Remember it was uh, when we, we wrote it down, it was a 210. So as long as she paid within 10 days and she paid exactly on the 10th day, so she gets the discount. Let's figure out how much she uh, owes me if she gets a 2% discount based on what the net balance is. So her balance right now, Simply be take the twenty one thousand minus these two. So she owes me eighteen nine fifty, but I give her a two percent discount. So 
So let's figure that up. 18,950 times 2% says her discount is 379. So we take 379, let's figure out how much we actually got paid then. 379, take that away from the 18,950. So what we're getting when she sends a check, we're getting cash for 18,571. Then we, instead of cash, we gave her a sales discount. So that's our other debit to help offset what our eventual credit will be. So the sales discount was 379. Remember that's a contract count. That's why it's a debit. And then total, our accounts receivable has to be the full amount that it was. It has to be 18,950. I don't want it to be 18,571 because if it was 18,571 here, that would leave me a balance still. And this this person doesn't owe me anything. They owe me nothing because I gave them a discount. So I want to credit the full amount of $18,950. And check my work. And they look good. Now let's do, we're doing the same thing, except from the other person's point of view. Now we're doing it from Macy's point of view. And I can even keep up some of these same numbers because they're not going to overlap. Because now we are the buyer. Now it tells us here, because this is going to be the case, like on May 3rd, Macy had nothing to do with buying inventory. So it says, if no entry is required, select no journal entry required in the first account field. All right, so on May 3rd, Macy did nothing. So we're going to put in here, no journal entry required, and simply skip through it. Allied sold um, 14 to us, to Macy, so we're Macy now. We're getting items. <clears throat> now, it, the only thing we don't know here is what Macy is gonna be considering these. It says, um, Macy is the major customer buyer, but what is she buying? Is she buying inventory? Or is she buying, is it considered equipment to her? We don't really know. Let's keep looking down, maybe it says here. Oh yeah, here it is. Macy is a retailer that uses a gross method. All right, and purchase these, this is the key word here for resale. So Macy is also counting these as inventory. So we're gonna debit Macy's inventory for 21,000 and show that we owe an account payable of 21,000. When we come up here to the account payable, I'm just gonna that put in 21,000 now for um, we owe Allied. That's gonna be the company that we owe as Macy. And we have inventory of 21,000 from our purchase. And that was on, uh, that was the May 5th. And we are allowed May 5th, they give us a 210 uh, discount option. Yeah, that's all we got to do. We're not the seller, so we don't have to do a cost of goods sold. Second piece, Macy, that's us. We return 125 items. Okay, so we no longer have it. We're going to take it off of our bill. And it tells us the amount when we do that is 1750. So we're going to take off the account table, 1750, and credit our merchandise inventory for 1750. And let's take it off of our bill. Record that entry. Very simple. And then remember, we we are given a discount on what we owe. So we just do the exact same thing we did. Take off on our accounts payable, 300 bucks, and then show that the inventory isn't quite worth that 300 bucks. So put 300 here. Come down here and show that the inventory went down in value because they were scuffed by 300 bucks. 
finally, uh, Macy, us, we pay our bill that we owe. And if we remember back, we can, we don't have to recalculate it. But I, 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 it was um, a discount. Let's see if I remember that it didn't. Remember that we owe eighteen nine fifty. So if we do all of this again, we can do it. But it's going to be the same both ways. Eighteen nine fifty. And oh, here it is. Still have it on the calculator. And when we do a, a two percent discount on that eighteen nine fifty, it comes out to be how much was actually paid was eighteen five seventy one. But that's not going to be our first thing. Our first item we want to show here. That I make a, I take off eighteen nine fifty off of what I owe, because I don't owe anything anymore. So I'm going to debit my accounts payable for eighteen nine fifty. I'm going to show that I paid cash. On the amount here eighteen five seventy one, with the two percent discount, and then that three seventy nine, the amount of the uh, discount. Remember that goes directly towards the inventory. The inventory didn't cost us the, that extra 379 because we got a discount for paying early. So therefore I have to take that 379 right off of the inventory. So I would come right down here and have 379. Now my inventory only costs me this much, whatever this total is. And so on a per unit basis, remember how it was um, we were selling it for 14 bucks a piece, or 14 I think it was. I don't, I don't remember how many units we bought, but let's, if we find out our full price, 21,000, but then we took away some items, took away some more costs, took away a little bit more. This is what the items actually cost me. That's what our cash was. And then I would simply divide this by how many units I have. So I know what they cost me each. So then when I go to sell them, I can mark it up to have an appropriate sale price. So if they, let's say I'm just making this up because it's not, we, let's go ahead and figure using the little numbers. We bought um, 1,500 units, but we returned 125. So when you do the difference, that's 1,375. If I divide this amongst the 1,375 units, each item cost me $13 and well, right about 50 cents a piece. So when I turn around and sell them, I'm gonna to wanna to sell them for a little bit more than maybe 17 bucks or 18. Okay, check my work. Everything looks good. <clears throat> okay, let's go ahead and do um, this one just because it has shipping involved as well and make sure we can figure out the shipping part of it. Um, let's, let's pull up a new T account sheet. Yeah, it's just quick. Give me a second and we'll pull up a new inventory, a new T account sheet. Okay, here we go. So now this one, the only thing different with this example is we have shipping. So let's see how it works. We're gonna do, again, we're gonna look at, looks like we're gonna do it from maybe both perspectives. I'm not really sure. Yeah, required one and required two. Sydney is the buyer, Troy is the seller. All right, so first we're preparing entries required one. It says from Sydney, the buyer. So let's go through these. Sydney accepts delivery of 40,000 of merchandise it purchased for resale. Okay, so we're gonna resell these items from Troy. Invoice 310 net 90. So we have 10 days to get a 10% or to get a 3% discount. Otherwise, everything's due in 90 days. FOB shipping point. Remember that means it's free to the buyer only until it gets to the shipping point. So not very good. So therefore, the buyer is paying. The goods cost Troy eight thirty thousand. Sydney pays three forty five in cash to the shipping company. That's not really realistic, but we'll work with it. All right. So let's do our first entry. Notice how they have the broken down. The first one, they don't even put the shipping in. 
we're going to put the shipping in second. So from Sydney's perspective, that's who we're doing this first. We got 40,000 of inventory. And we credited our accounts payable to Troy for 40,000. That's pretty simple. So we had 40,000 and this was on May 11th. And we had terms of three Now we're going to add in that extra cost. So my inventory down here was 40,000 on May 11th. And then also on May 11th, we added another 345 to get the items to our store. So we put purchase inventory for the cost. Remember, I do not debit shipping expense. Any cost that gets the item to our store, we put it right into that asset account. And it says I paid cash to the shipping company. Okay, so obviously we had cash before, who knows what it was. All right, Sydney returns $1,400 of the 40 grand of goods. Who receives them the same day and restores them to its inventory? The returned items cost Troy 1,000 fit. All right, so just from uh, Sydney's point of view though, we're taking off of our account $40,000. 1400 we're taking that away from our merchandise inventory because we don't have it anymore. That's all we're simply doing here on May the 12th. Take away $1,400. Notice nothing to do with shipping. Shipping was already done. It was a separate event. They're not going to pay us back for that shipping or any of it, any part, part of it. Sydney pays Troy for the amount owed. All right, so this is on May 20th. We come up here and they get a 3% if paid in 10 days. Yep, they, they made that, they paid in nine days. So all we've got to do is get the balance. The balance of the account shows 38,600 that is due. So I want to come over here and credit 38600 because we're paying off the entire amount owed. But I'm not paying cash quite that much because I get a 3% discount on So I get a discount of 1158 Take that off of the 386 that I owe. So I'm paying cash of thirty-seven four forty. Thirty-seven four forty-two, and the discount was the eleven fifty-eight. Remember, we discount if we're the buyer. We actually discount the item that we bought. So eleven fifty-eight. Yeah, we go to Troy and we do the same thing. It says for the first one, record the merchandise sold on account. So we go back up here. Remember, it was 40 grand and then it cost us 30. Okay, so our customer owes me 40 grand because we had our sales. And then it's going to say, okay, once you've done that, now we've got to record the cost of those goods going out. And it tells me in the problem that the cost of those goods was 30 grand. So my cost of goods sold, 30. And merchandise inventory, 30 grand. 345, the shipping, that doesn't affect us at all because that's something that only Sydney and the shipping company were, um, were, uh, dealing with, so we don't have to put that in anywhere. On May 12th, we do record the sales return. She returned, remember, $1,400 of stuff, so we call that a sales return. 
and we take that off of her bill that she owes us. And then we have to do part two. And part two says, okay, how much of that $1,400 was uh, returned inventory to my, to my place that it cost me to actually make it? And it said, of that $1,400 that was returned, it had cost me $1,050. The original cost of that $1,400 before I sold it for $1,400 was $1,050. So I put that merchandise back on my books for $1,050 and credit the cost of goods sold. And then finally, we record the cash that was collected. So the our, our when, it, when it's just reversed, our individual owes us thirty-eight thousand six hundred, but they didn't really pay us the thirty-eight thousand six hundred. Remember, they got a discount, so they got cash. We got cash because we're Troy this time. Thirty-seven four four two. The reason we didn't get the full thirty-eight is because we gave them a sales discount. Okay, eleven fifty-eight. And it all, where did it come from? It came from the amount that was owed. The full amount owed from their receivable was 38.6. Now we can check the work and let's see how we do. That's, that's requirement number two. Requirement number one, that looks good too. All right, we're just gonna do a couple more and then we're gonna finish off for the day. Okay, this one is just like what I did in my example uh, from part one of my lecture, where all we wanna do is come down here and fill in this inventory T account with the what happened and then the amount, and then on the credit side, what happened and the amount. So let's, Let's do that. Remember the top one, it's always our beginning inventory. We always wanna start with beginning. And it tells us here that the beginning inventory is on the, the end of last year, on 2016, was 25 grand. <clears throat> this cost of merchandise sold, this is probably actually gonna be our last entry. So I'll come back to that. Now, merchandise, invoice for merchandise that was purchased throughout the month or the year, 192,000. So I come over here and put in merchandise that was uh, purchased. So. There we go. Invoice cost of purchases, 192. Shrinkage determined on December 31st. That means the, something happened to the inventory, whether it was maybe stolen. Uh, somehow $800 of inventory is no longer on our shelves. We don't know what happened to it. Perhaps it went down in value, it got scuffed. We don't know, but for well, no matter what it is, we call it shrinkage. And we take away on the credit side 800 bucks. Cost of transportation in, so that's part of shipping. They get it ready to our store, so we're gonna put that over here. Transportation in, 2,900. Cost of merchandise returned. This is returned by customers, so that's coming back to us. So I'm gonna put that here. Cost of merchandise returned. Let's put, um, let's see what they want here, returns by customers, 2100. Now, purchase discounts that we received, so purchase discounts received, yes, we get to take it off, and then purchase returns that we did, so this is returns that our customers gave back to us, now we are giving some returns back to the supplier. So we're going to call this a purchase return for 4000 And then we come up here as our last item. This is our cost of goods sold. It was 196000 And let's call it the cost of 
of sales transaction 196000. And this 20 grand, that would be our balance as of the end of the year. Share work. Then you can go down and do part two. It says figure up the cost of the goods sold. Well, I don't even, I don't see the direction, so it's hard to, let's go back to the question. <clears throat> All right. Cost of goods sold. Hmm. We've used every single number up there. We don't have, this is the cost of goods sold, the 196. Let's see here what they want us to do. Well, I'll have to come back and look at that one because I'm not really sure why We'll have a cost of goods sold. I, I guess our actual cost of goods sold, what we would sh just simply show here is the cost of sales transaction, just show what the T account would be. We have 196,000. Because technically it's not really 196 because the customer did return some stuff. Let's put in the rest of that. Um, Inventory shrinkage, no, no, no. Oh, we gotta put this one in. The cost of the merchandise returned was 2100. Let's see here, purchase returns by customers, 2100. This is our actual cost of goods sold. Work. There could be something wrong here, but I think that's all we're wanting for this one. I just didn't call it the right thing. Let's uh, return to the question. This would be uh, for questions the balance, the ending balance for cost of goods sold. Yeah, there we go. Not sure why it's saying answer's not complete. Uh, it looks like everything's complete to me. Oh well. Okay, we've done pretty much the same as this one. We've done that. Let's go, let's keep looking. Um, okay, this one, what this has to do, and I don't, I'm not sure if we have any of this in the homework or not, I don't remember, but this is kind of a review from last week because you're gonna be doing mainly adjusting entries. You're gonna be, it's saying here that we had accrued salaries of uh, 1,700 prepaid with 3,000 and a physical account. So what you're gonna be doing is updating your sales and updating your prepaid accounts. It says accrued salaries amount to 17 sales salaries. So um, we have a wages expense and then a wage is payable because we have to pay our workers. And then we're gonna to have to do the, something similar to the prepaid. We're gonna to have to get rid of 3,000. And then we're gonna to have to adjust our inventory like a periodic system at the end of the year. So that's what that one is asking for. It's doing some adjusting entries. Let's keep looking. Okay, yeah, I wanted to do a some part of the income statement. So the income statement, remember what it looks like. Let's uh, go back to my notes. The income statement, and it looks like we're just doing the top part. It's going to look like this, where we have our revenue and then any discounts and returns. Should be over here. And that equals our net sales. So let's go ahead and just enter these in. So we've got sales, our gross sales. The amount, 200 grand. And then we had our sales returns. We always want to not add, never want to add those. We want to subtract them. Less sales return and allowances, 16,000. And then 
less our sales discounts. That's really weird. I'm getting it right now. Less, um, less sales discounts. Four grand. And that's going to total up to be our net sales. And let's see where they want that. This is. There, let's put that back in. Less sales discounts. And then finally, our net sales of 180,000. All right, that's, um, you're gonna have a little bit on current ratios. Current ratios are, and asset test ratios are very simple. You can easily Google those. It's just an easy formula. Current ratio is simply your current assets divided by your current liabilities. So they give us, these are the current assets and they go ahead and total it, current liabilities. The asset test ratio are your current assets, but they're called your quick assets and they mean what assets can you turn into money really quick? And the only two, the two items up here that you can't turn into money real quick on average are your inventory and prepaid expenses. So you're simply going to be taking the top three when you do the asset test ratio. Okay, this is just more um, doing the same thing we've already uh, done. So I think that's going to be all we're going to do here. We've got a really good, uh, I think you should have it down. So we're going to close out this lesson at this point. And I'll see everybody in our next class, what we're going to do FIFO, LIFO, and average cost.